and what we're talking about now today is our first property. Um, I am going to move house to my first ever flat that will be mine. My my outright bought it flat uh, tomorrow. And uh, nice. yeah, after yeah, we found it in October. It's really it's slightly annoying because um, basically my biggest problem was I couldn't get a mortgage because mm. um, I've been a freelancer for the last two years. Um, it's all been sort of short term, sort of six months at a time kind of work. Um, and it's also been inconsistent because, um, you know, I've worked as a carer, I've worked as a journalist. Being a freelance journalist, it's job to job. It's not, you know, it's article to article, not, mm. you know, and then as a, and then I've also worked as a copywriter for Airbnb. Loads and loads of stuff, but it's inconsistent and the banks don't like that. Apparently, mm. ever since COVID started, the banks have been funny about giving out mortgages, um, which you'd have thought they'd learn their lesson after the subprime mortgage thing crashed the economy. But no, it's COVID that's done it, and they will, now they're feeling insecure about it. So um, I found that quite difficult because all I was applying for, I was applying for about hundred grand, because my place is worth around the two fifty mark. Uh, that's where I was kind of looking for, which is one bed flat somewhere near London. Um, I found one that's beautiful actually. It's uh, near. Uh, it's an old mental asylum. Um, got really tall ceilings, really old. It's a grade two listed building. It's absolutely stunning. Um, and I've got grounds, and I've got a pool, and I've got like a gym, um, you and got it's, a gym and I've got a gym as well. Uh, yeah, and a pool, and it's this beautiful like old school hallway, like a bit. manor house. It looks, like, it's, it's literally a manor house, and like, and the flats are going around me are going for like five hundred grand a pop, which is crazy money for a two bed flat. I mean, it's a cool flat, but it's not that cool. It's not a million, pa- half a million pounds. Cool. That sounds like a hell of a first property, though. I mean, yeah, it's well, no, because the thing is that I was looking around London, um, and you can't find anything that's worth anything uh, with a London postcode for less than three hundred grand. I mean, there were one bed flats. No, there were two bed flats that they're pretending are one bed flats. So no, no, one bed flats they're pretending two bed flats because they put up a bit of drywall in the middle, and everyone's going, "Oh yeah, this is a spacious living room." I'm like, you can barely fit a bed in there. That's not a bedroom. That's that's a cupboard. That's an extended wardrobe, and you're asking for another fifty grand. I mean. This is the first thing that I found very difficult was that um, I spent about a year looking um, and I didn't know where to go to start with. So I put down places that, you know, were familiar-ish um, and I wanted it to be in town sort of thing. I didn't want to be too close to home because otherwise it doesn't really feel like you've moved. I'm actually now about 20 minutes away from my parents, which, you know, and it's kind of this, the town, it's near the town that I grew up in, um, which is a bit odd of an odd feeling because in a way I'm growing up but in another, you know, and moving on with my life, but in another, you know, I've lived all over the world as well. So it's not like it's the, you know, the first place I've lived that wasn't my parents, but it is a bit sort of near home, but it's a really perfect place for me. Um, it's a bit quiet, but I'm not going to complain about that when I'm about half, you know, I'm literally an hour away from London and, um, you know, on a commuter line that goes past my house, basically. Beautiful ground. Oh yeah, I have grounds. Grounds. Yeah, grounds. grounds. I mean, they're paying two and a half grand for... Um, for the uh, for the upkeep of the place with some company that really likes to just ask for money for nothing. But um, so is this the first time you're having your own place to yourself that's just yours. Yeah, I'm paying the bills for the first time in five years. Wow. Um, as opposed to paying the rent. Yeah. Um, which is going to be new. Um, and especially with the recent energy hikes, I think that it's going to be difficult because I'm not used to. I'm used to paying like maybe four four hundred five hundred pound rent a mm-hmm. month um, for you know, for just to be able to live there and I don't have to worry about these bills. But now I'm gonna have to, um, you know, I, I've have, I'm have i gonna have to sort of calculate my averages and, you know, do all the sort of adult stuff and also council tax for the first time. Oh, that's a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to worry about that now. Yeah. And, and I, I've never I've never paid council tax because do you wanna, just- Do you wanna break that down for like our American listeners? Okay, so you got, there's loads and loads of different types of tax. Um, so you've got, you pay, uh, about two hundred pounds a year. If you own a flat here, you have to pay for the ground rent, which is the person who owns the ground underneath your feet. Uh, you have to pay them. I pay them about two hundred pounds. I don't know what you pay. Actually, I'll actually admit. Um, since being married, I don't don't know. I don't have any clue of what I pay in anything anymore. Great contribution just, there, Marlon. Great contribution. I, I literally, <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I literally, I uh, just hand that stuff over to my wife. But I remember um, when. It, 
I literally moved around the corner from where I was renting. I remember when, um, it was quite a bit of money in terms of um, what we'll pay for council tax. I think it was like 160 or something. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm due to pay for a one bed flat, so I'm, I think that it's going to be a bit less than that. But I think it's um, in Surrey, so it'll be about 1100, 1200. So the way, it's, way um, it works out is um, I know in London anyway, it's broken up into different categories like category A, B, C, D. I can't remember which is more expensive than the other, but. Um, you have literally, literally no choice in um, how expensive your council tax is going to be so it's automatically calculated based on how many rooms you have and which, yeah, which category you are so you, you just apply for it when it, when you move into your property yeah you don't have a choice yeah. and the thing is that they're supposed to pay for the roads and stuff yeah. but I've started to understand now I mean I haven't even started paying it but yeah. now that I've, I'm looking at down the barrel of that particular gun I can see why my local newspaper, everyone, when I was writing the locals, everyone got so angry mm. about potholes. Yeah, you would. It's pothole season. We had pothole season between February and April where every mm. other story was about potholes because mm. people just wanted to know about this stuff. People started putting ducks in them. People started <laughs> getting angry. The number of phone calls, I used to get more phone calls about that than stabbings. Mm. And it was crazy because, and I could see why though, because you're like, well, what the fuck are you doing with our yeah. money? And, and it's, it's like, yeah, it's it's really annoying because, and as soon as you find out that they've been like gambling your money, yeah. you're just like, well, that of that million pounds that you just spent there, yeah. it should be going on, you know, I don't even know what, what it goes on. It goes on roads, cap, you know, like making sure we have a council. I don't know. Oh, the bins as well. You know, like utilities, things like that. I mean, it makes sense. But then, like you automatically have to pay this money. Yeah. You don't you have, have choice. no choice. Yeah. You can't you, opt out and then just whether you're renting, it you makes you make your rent more. You have to factor this in when you're renting to, mm. to how much you can afford to pay each month. If you have a mortgage, you have to factor that in as well with how much counter tax you're going to pay. If you're going to, especially you, you just bought property. So you need, yeah. when, when you're buying it, you probably even had to think about, okay, how much counter tax. In, yeah, in, in, I mean, I was lucky because, you know, uh, basically I've ended up and I've come completely clean because of the fact that I'm just freelancer yeah. and stuff. Um, I struggled to get a mortgage. And so mm. instead, um, and this is going to make me sound like the most white privileged guy in the world. <laughs> um, my parents helped me out. So mm. I've been saving up all my life and, you know, I've made myself a nice little nest egg. Um, but, you know, like I think that as a journalist and also as a teacher and, you know, having done all the things I've done, I've been living hand to mouth quite a bit for quite long periods of my life but i have always been holding back mm. you know money that i you know saving up saving up saving up mm. um and so yeah so they've helped me out with that and basically acted as a mortgage so i'm going to owe them quite a bit mm. of money um and i was just lucky that they had that kind of capital which most people don't and you know it's something that i feel quite embarrassed about because you know it kind of feels a bit like you know they own more of a percentage of my house than i do this is the most YouTube thing we're ever going to do. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please do like and subscribe.